Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. A date which will live in infamy. I still have a dream. Good night and good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Pat Dixon. Why are you a communist and what are you doing on my show? <laughs> you know what? Are you talking to Edward R. Murrow? Because I, I started to think he was a commie. You know, What's McCarthy, up, man? I don't think that McCarthy was wrong. Oh, nothing, man. I'm just talking crap. I love it, man. Me too. So I actually know um, uh, regrettably little about you. And I just heard you were cool. And word on the street is it might be true. And what's your story? What's your scoop? Well, I do a show called New York City Crime Report since 2011. I live in New York, and I am uh, sort of a fake reporter, but a real comedian. I do stand-up. I've been doing stand-up for 25 years, and I have, uh, you know, that show. It's, it's going on for, what, it's uh, 11th season now. It's just New York City crime with punchlines, you know, sort of like stories from the Post and the Daily News, but with jokes, uh, actual jokes. And... Um, mm-hmm. So I, I do so it's that. Been a hell of, it's been a good year for that, then. It has, but a lot of the stuff that they've added on has not been the interesting kind of stuff. You know, like we like the stuff where a guy, you know, kidnaps a kid and cuts him up and leaves his feet in the freezer for some reason, or you know, when a, a couple of guys are staying at the uh, you know international hotel up there, and and the guy ends up freaking out and and cutting the guy's balls off with a corkscrew, you know, and wearing them around as a bracelet. You know I mean? These are stories that happen. So a lot of the stuff now is this gang violence that's just kind of expanded. I mean, there's still some interesting stuff. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty. But mm-hmm. it's 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 not the boom time that some people might think. Right. We need, we need the bizarre behavior mm-hmm. back. That's right. 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 We have like the very boring sort of pass A type of evil shit going on right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, kind we, of. Like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah we it's like innovative it, criminals. <laughs> it, it's like New York is going Chicago, you know, which is like uh, <laughs> just trying to impress with big numbers and running up the score. Yeah. So how'd you get into all that, man? Just doing comedy, and then somebody was like, "Hey, we should do a radio show." Well, you know, I mean, obviously, there came a point in stand up. Now, when I started doing up, it was like, "Oh, you, you're supposed to get it in front of the industry, and then you get a sitcom or something," like that, mm-hmm. you know. Well, that's not really the way it is anymore, uh, and, and it hasn't been that way for a long time. And it changed, you know, subtly, gradually, until like, well, you, you know, with with social media, YouTube, you have to have your own audience, and you have to create a lot of stuff, you know, other than stand up. You can't just do it just on stand up anymore. Like, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's you know, it's rare. So, uh, and plus, I I like do I minored in journalism or majored in journalism, you know. In college, I actually switched to alcoholism at some point uh, yeah. from journalism. Well, and, al- uh, alcoholics okay. tell more truth than journalists these days. I mean, just like Bukowski, man. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bukowski, you know what? I like his novels. I even like his poetry, which is like a, a rare thing. I love his poetry, to be honest with you. I actually, I'm the inverted. I've never read a Bukowski novel, but I have studied his poetry. Not in years, but in high school, I went through a big Bukowski phase. I yeah. remember I was in, uh, I was in uh, pre-calculus, and Miss Duncan was the teacher. And uh, she was actually a really sweet lady, um, but I was a dick. And I was reading Bukowski in her pre-calculus class while she was teaching. She goes, you know, that's really rude. <laughs> and I just go, it's just more interesting. <laughs> and I got in big trouble for that. So I feel bad about it, but at the same time, you know, I was with right. To <laughs> be honest, you have an alcoholic. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, just tell her like it is. And, and, and so, uh, you know... That's that's young to be into Bukowski, I guess, or it's about the right age. I was into Bukowski in, t- in my twenties, like early twenties mm. and stuff. And uh, you know, that's why I started drinking wine, you know, for a little while, thinking that well, that's what he does now. He drinks wine, so I'll just drink right. wine. I'll be fine. And I I bought a gallon of Burgundy, Ernest and Julio Gallo, on Valentine's Day for myself and my wife to drink, you know, with, along with the dinner that I made, my first wife. And she didn't drink, uh, so you know it was all for me. And I never drank wine again since February fourteenth, nineteen ninety three. Wow! I mean, I quit wow. that before I quit all the other stuff because I thought I was going to die the next day. I mean, I really did. I, I, that's the first time I thought a hangover might be fatal. <laughs> so you don't drink at all now? No, I haven't drank in twenty one years. But tonight, tonight might be the night. Man. 
Yeah, who knows? <laughs> well, I guess if you always had that mentality, you're less likely to have relapse. I suppose, yeah. I mean, I don't think of it as a relapse. It's just changing your mind. Uh, you know, like uh, you, it, it's like um, I, I'm not saying that I, 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 I've certainly taken advantage, of course, of the, the programs that exist and, and stuff like that. I don't really like to talk about it because it's not, it's not really like something to specifically mention. But uh, I, you know, that's the way I did it. And, and I, I've never been happier. I, I, thought, I was thought I had to drink, you know, I thought that was like um, I thought it was like buying gas for the car. Yeah, I um, I nipped it in the bud. I quit drinking in 2015, I think. Yeah, 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 2015. And I was not an alcoholic when I quit, but I knew that I was gonna be. Uh, <laughs> just because I it I got some family that have alcohol problems, and they slowly became alcohol problems over a couple of decades. And I think I was like 26, 25 at the time. And I was like, you know what? I've really got it in me. <laughs> so I probably should quit now <laughs> yeah. before yeah. it gets to be a problem. <laughs> well done, man. Well done. You know, I mean, like if you, the thing is, if you can just quit that quit like that, though, then you see the sense of that. You probably were not an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wasn't. But, but the irony, I, I just I just know that I could be I've got like the spirit for it. You know, I am I, a I'm a little bit of a cynic. Um, I, I fucking love, I love the poets and you know, like the J Jim Morrison was my idol growing up and I could just totally You're give kidding. in to like hedonism. Yeah. I could totally give in to hedonism. And so I just decided that, listen, do I want to fucking make money and like be around for my family or do I want to live this life? And I just decided I was going to fucking, that I one no passion, I no one, no. are you super selfish? Yeah, I'm super selfish. Okay. Well then maybe you are an alcoholic. You know, uh, Morrison was, uh. <laughs> He was, he was like my, the, the Doors were my first favorite, like, uh, you know, teenage band. Me know? too. And uh, I was 13, 14, got into the Doors really big. I mean, I probably still know them more than I know any other group. You know, I mean, they only have oh, six yeah. albums, you know, so it's not too tough. Yeah, at but, one point uh, in time, I could probably type all the lyrics to every song. I, you, you know what, we should have, point. we could, we could have a Doors off, you know, and, and. Uh, I bet you'd win because it's been a long time. I got burned out. But I still love the Doors. What's your favorite Doors song? Right now, the Changeling. Mm -hmm. And I, I got into that later stuff, that LA Woman stuff, more, you know, later on because I used to be into all the Lizard King type shit, you know, and in the, the organ. I'm Lizard King, I can do anything. Yeah, <laughs> I even I had a, my eighth grade talent show for crying out loud. I did a uh, recitation of celebration of the lizard, you know, falling on the ground. <laughs> That's a hell of a thing for an eighth grader to do. <laughs> <laughs> in my parachute pants but oh, that's uh, awesome yeah it was fun uh it, yeah I, it sort of established a reputation for me after that now that i think about it but but then later on i got into more of the roadhouse blues type stuff maggie mcgill and uh mm -hmm. the just you know the stuff that actually is pretty good and then there's the, the future is uncertain and the end is always near that's that <laughs> is a great great line you know he had some great great line he had some dumb dumb lines but he had some great lines yeah, I I fucking loved you. I got into him because I watched. Um, I grew up. I was born in '90, and I had three older brothers, so sort of some eclectic um, retro uh, influences that most people my age didn't have. Just because I was born, my parents were 41 when they had me. My oldest brother was 17 years older than me, so I was really not my generation. This is insane. What? No, no, my parents were like 39, 40. And 39 and my oldest sister is 16 years older than me wow that's crazy so uh -huh. so oh, yeah so I'm the young, I, and i'm the youngest of three i don't know a uh, four rather i'm the youngest of four too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's wild so i uh but they're all boys but i uh i watched the doors movie probably when i was too young to watch it and that's when i fell in love with jim morrison because val Kilmer nailed it um yeah. and then i read no one here gets out alive and then i started buying the poetry books and then i listened to all the records no one here gets out alive is like the it, that's a big gateway uh book into yeah. that whole world yeah it's very good i really enjoyed that book too uh and and the thing that got me into it was the movie it was it was earlier than that it was something that came on hbo called too young to die or something like that or mm. no it's called when the music's over and and Morrison was in that, and Lenny Bruce was in that. So I kind of got into Lenny Bruce too, not too long after that. Especially when I started thinking about comedy rather than music, realizing that you know, with musical talent, you know, you, there's really like a, I don't know, man. You have to get other people to cooperate with you and shit like that. There's always too much drinking involved, but you know, with stand up, you can do it, you know, because it's just you. 
and that that's what sort of guided me into stand up. But yeah, it was that special. When the music's over, I was at early death stuff. I don't know why that was interesting. Before that, it was like Barry Manilow. Yeah, for me, it was um, it wasn't the early death stuff that I was particularly interested in necessarily. It was um, what fascinated me about Morrison was the idea that we could use um, psychedelics or any dr- any substance to open your mind. I was like into the phil- the philosophy of it, like the enlightenment aspect of it. I see. And so, I, I was like one of the first kids to ever smoke pot at my school because I was like, no, man, this is like, I'm going to open my mind. <laughs> it was just pot. But, yeah. <laughs> but you know, that was, it, I think there's something to be said for that. I mean, it does the tricks. Those fucking, yeah, it does the tricks. So. I mean, I know I heard Dark Side of the Moon in a different way after I got high. I know. Yeah, so my yeah. brother and I sat and listened to it and giggled the whole damn time. We listened to that, yeah. that sort of darkish kind of album. And yeah, uh, I smoked a lot of weed. And now, don't get me wrong, I did psychedelics and stuff like that. But I didn't, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little dubious on the doors that it opens up. But the, it sort of reduced everything to a genericism that I found fascinating. Yeah, I could get fascinated just by a stupid phrase, you know, like go to work. You know what I mean? Like it's your work. And like sort of breaking down human existence into work and and then you have recreation and, and sleep. And, and if, you, if you're a good human and you go to work, you eat. All these things that are really not interesting at all. <laughs> but they seem fascinating at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do, I do kind of know what you mean. Just yeah. the, I don't know. Yeah, the, the, almost like the trivialness of, of everything. But you don't really realize it unless you take a second to look at it. Like, yeah, whatever you're doing, you're inherently interested in. I mean, it's, it's, it's the thing you're the most interested in while you're doing it. But then if you look at it, you're like, why the fuck was I interested? In? It's like when you watch porn and as soon as you bust, you're like, why the fuck was I watching that? <laughs> Yeah. You ever had that? Like, what the fuck was I watching? Oh, sure. You know how that happens, too. She's not Is nearly it... as hot as she was five <laughs> seconds ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank God you could just close the damn thing. You don't have to get anybody to leave, you know? Oh, That's yeah. See, I, and I downloaded it. the DuckDuckGo browser on my phone or the, yeah, yeah, on my phone so that you can hit the fire button and it just all goes up in flames. And it's oh, that's us. That's the difference in us. I'm, I'm not quite porn on my phone, young, you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. for, for me, masturbation is still an event. You know, we used to respect this, but, uh, you know, like, uh, what they start off with stuff you're interested in actually right like and then right. you know and it gives you all these clips you know and maybe you didn't get to watch one that was the appropriate length right so you're still not <laughs> finished and so then you know, it gives you eight you know to choose from maybe and seven of them are exactly what you just watched in different iterations <laughs> so one of them is like well, give this a yeah. and then eventually all right Fine, mother and stepdaughter, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Especially if it's close to the holidays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you know that? Did you know that 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 the step shit blows up during holidays? That's hot. That's that's actually kind of hot. I don't know why, but I find that that's kind of a hot idea that that happens. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. But see, the thing is, I never had step family, so like I never experienced like having a crush on like somebody I was unrelated to that was like suddenly at every holiday event. They only make it step just so, just so they will have a broader appeal and not, you know, uh, truly offend all the uh, anti-incest people, you know. Really? Which, Do you think it's actually an incest fetish and it's just as close as you can get? Well, I think mother and daughter, it shouldn't be because really there's no way they can have a kid, right? So, I mean, like, what's really wrong with it? I mean, if they're both of age. <laughs> I guess. I but guess, that's man. that's usually, they, I mean, like. They, they, they managed to sell it so quick. You know, whoever is seducing who, say it's the mother <laughs> seducing the daughter, they're like, come on, let's have sex. No, that's how, you're crazy. You're my mother. And then within five minutes, it's like, yeah, lick it. So, <laughs> like, that is some fast grooming. Yeah, really what it is is sales training. Like Jordan Belfort, you know, from Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> he has like the straight line sales system where you can pay like five grand or whatever and get like the workbook. And yeah. honestly, if you just watch enough like step fantasy porn, you should know how to convert anybody within like 30 seconds. If they're family, you know right where those buttons are, I guess. You know, <laughs> you're playing on the trust. But I guess it's a sales technique. The, you know, plain folks, maternal trust, uh, right. you know, like whatever right. it is that, you know. Tell them what you're selling, why they want it, and then just execute, <laughs> right? <laughs> Always be closing. 
<laughs> yeah, ABC. So yeah, like let, let's like how would it how would it go? Like imagine like if there was a car salesman right that was trying to sell you like a Nissan Versa, you know, pretty dorky, shitty car. Um, and I know that because I had two of them. <laughs> and so so imagine the sales guy's trying to sell you a Nissan Versa, but he's using the step porn fantasy sales method. Mm. How does that go? You show up well, at the car lot. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, I got to call you by your first name the whole time, which is what they do anyway. Right. Find your first name and they go, you know, uh, I've watched you grow. You know, I've watched you. I see your, your progress, you know, and I don't want you to not know what you're doing. You know, when you get out there driving with, you know, <laughs> This is other people your sense. age, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how they. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's usually the sales pitch is something like, uh, "I can help you with your." Oh God, I hate to see you hurt. You know, it all comes from yeah. a character. Do you prefer manual or automatic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, <laughs> I'm a, I'm all about the uh, I'm all about the automatic, but that doesn't translate into no stick. <laughs> I, I still can I can't watch I can't watch porn with any men in it. You know. Really? Yeah, yeah. I go through phases. I've probably been through every every heterosexual phase under the sun. You know what? Yeah, it's sad when when I think back to all the different stages I've been through, and I know I was in them for a period of time. There's the Asian massage stage, you yeah, know, and the, yeah. and the, uh, the the mother stepdaughter and daughter, and not her daughter. They say not her daughter, just in case you're going to call child protective services or something, right. you know, and report them. Uh, or uh, you know the uh, well, I was. If I go through my whole list of porn genres, it's going to be a very depressing show. Right. Well, we can everyone. Do screen share and pull up the category section of Pornhub and basically, yes, yes, yeah, no, yes. Yeah. Not on your life, man. <laughs> no. Man, this conversation's been badass in 16 we, minutes. We, we found my limits. <laughs> we got from the doors to, to porn yeah. and car sales. We, we have broken basically... on through to the other side. Yeah, man. This is what enlightenment looks like. If you if you have ever taken acid in your life, you will break on through to the other side and arrive here. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the worst thing you ever watched on acid? Um, I have actually never taken acid before. I have only taken shrooms. Okay, shrooms are so much better. I used to have so much fun taking shrooms, uh, but I didn't take them until I was like really grown. I mean, like. Uh, I said I haven't drank in 21 years. I did take some shrooms a few years ago. And uh, we used to just jump on the subway, this girl and I, and uh, we would just laugh our asses off and talk about how we were on drugs. And it was a, it was a blast. You'd take the N train from Queens into New York, uh, into Manhattan, and just fucking follow our noses all day. It was the most fun. Not back to nature type shit, but you know, it, it was all right. Uh, mushrooms, they never were like frightening to me or anything like that. Acid yeah. was pretty scary. You want it to be over. Well, I, see, I would... I would take LSD if it was the shit that they were making in the lab in the 60s. But today it's like, where the fuck did this come from? You know, like, yeah, it's like when the people vaccine. started taking acid, it was like the fucking lab grade shit. And now it's like somebody's fucking reading the anarchist cookbook and trying to make it in their kitchen. And it's like, I don't know if this is going to work out. <laughs> is that the way it is? I really didn't know. I, I, I assume that you mean the Timothy Leary type stuff that they're using in like, uh, I don't know, army experiments to see what people can do and what they can't do. Right, yeah, that's what I mean. I think it was. I think the acid was better fifty years ago. Wow, but the weed. I think is it was. So much I think it now. was. I think it was. I think the acid was leaking from legitimate sources then, and now it's just being made illegitimately. And the other, the it's gone the other way around with weed. With weed, it used to be illegitimate, and now it's legit, and that's why it's better. So you, so legitimacy, that's important when you're talking about. Well, drugs. I think so because I think what's happening is like if if you buy weed that's like from the market, like the black market, like cartel shit, for example. And I obviously, anybody can grow weed, so I'm not saying that all weed's cartel, but the cartel, they don't follow any like pesticide regulations, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you're smoking like whatever the fuck they like grew. And <clears throat> I think if you buy the lab grade shit, it's gonna be better, man. Like when you have people that can legitimately do it and hire real scientists and they're like messing with the genes and they're trying to figure out, you know, how to breed this with this to make it have a higher THC volume and how do we, uh, you know, mitigate the anxiety factor associated with the greater high so that you can get as high as you want without having increased anxiety. Like, they're doing the science shit that the cartel's not doing. They're just, like, fucking spray it with Agent Orange and then fucking grow it. I don't know. Wow, Obviously not Agent Orange, but... Right, yeah, yeah. Spray it with whatever. Well, you know, right. they, they come up with some interesting results that way, you know, like this uh, K2 that they have now, which is, like, uh, this 
potpourri that they it's not even weed to begin with they spray it with different chemicals and uh, they go good luck you know and it gets you fucked up but then they outlaw it and they have to change the chemicals you can never really get used to what the hell's going on i've never tried it before i mean like i've seen people on it oh man they really are unpredictable it's it's sort of like uh pcp but i think without the strength you know i, I don't think it actually gives you the chimp strength that pcp can give you I mean, i've never taken pcp Oh, really? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a, a background of a lot of angel dust, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> you seem like a real dust guy. And there you are. I didn't my even mind. know that was the name for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm from the street. Yeah. Uh, well, no, this I saw a video from Atlantic City where a guy was on PCP. He gets out of his truck. You know, he's led him on this. He's led the cops on like, I don't know, 20 minute chase. Gets out of the truck and just has a gun and just, you know, starts shooting. And the cops, you know, they're all there. They're lined up. And they shot him something like 30 times. With maybe gun more. Or taser? With guns, you know. Oof. I mean, because he was at a distance and firing a gun at them. I mean, this was of back course. This was back when you could still, you kill know, somebody. kill a criminal. Yeah, you know, and sort of like it didn't always turn into a bad thing. But, man, I mean, the guy was walking towards them and shooting, getting – he got a lot closer. And, he, and they were just like holes, bullet holes, you know, just like he, he was just getting shot up until one of them got him in the knee and he finally fell down. Mm-hmm. It looked as if like, oh, this guy is basically indestructible. Well, I think that proves that if you die, it's only because you you gave up like a pussy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like if you could say it's all will, bro. So like it, <laughs> everybody who's ever died just gave up. <laughs> they just gave up. Yeah, they stopped fighting. You know, it makes you wonder about what this could do for the Olympics, too. You know, like PCP know. in the Olympics, boxing on PCP. What do you think? Do you think that they should just legalize all performance-enhancing drugs so it's fair again? Fuck it. At this point, you know, if they're going to have male weightlifters competing with the women and shit, yeah, let's just go ahead and give them PCP. <laughs> We've spat on the flag and all that is holy at this point. Why what not? They did that? What if they did that as like a troll? Where you have, you know, a, 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 a oh, I'm trying to fucking say it the right way so I don't get banned. You have an XX chromosome person compete as an XY chromosome person in a weightlifting challenge, but the XX is like secretly allowed to take infinite numbers of PCP. So you got this girl just kicking everybody's ass. <laughs> yeah, that would be a funny troll, man. <laughs> You lost me with all those variables, but I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. if you had a girl compete in the male event, oh, in the male event, up. right? Yeah, well, but I she mean, was loaded up. You know, the trans person didn't even uh, win a medal in the weightlifting. Apparently, they oh yeah, the dude. Yeah, the, the dude. dude. Yeah, the dude. I should say the dude. The person with a, the individual who was born with a penis. The X. The X. Y. Yeah. Uh and you know what? I mean, this Rapino chick with the purple hair, I'll just say it. You, you know what? You win a gold medal, you can come back and talk shit, I guess. You know, if you kneel uh, during the anthem, we got to kind of put up with that. You come back with a bronze medal, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I agree. You have to win. That's why they should start doing the national anthem at the end of the competition. Yeah. Because if, if they did it at the end of the competition, then I don't know that she would have had the balls to kneel at the bronze. Yeah, that's you know what you, you make a good point. I mean, she would have. She has no taste. She has no shame. You know, yeah. She's a she's just a terrible individual, like so many are today. They should make it an Olympic event where um, it's uh, who who can stand the longest for their national anthem. You know, like as an athletic endeavor. So it's like they just play it on repeat until somebody sits down. <laughs> it's like or, four days, like a dance just contest. There, just, yeah, people are just standing there, just like shaking, like knees. Went. <laughs> That would be a better tribute. <laughs> Wouldn't that really be awesome would. to watch it with like would. a time lapse, you know? <laughs> so like many the stars of us. are moving in the background, you know, real fast. And Throw PCP there. into that too. Oh, right. Time lapse. The days are <laughs> yeah. going by. And they, they yeah. can't eat or drink. They have to be fed. Some David you know? Blaine shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David Blaine. He's hey, a badass, you, man. Yeah, you into him. He eats frogs yeah, or something. Does he actually swallow those things? Is that, uh, is that something I, he does? I, don't, I can't even. I don't know, know that he eats frogs, but he does some. He does some some crazy shit. But you someone know, Joe Rogan eating frogs. I know you can swallow a sword, right? And um, uh, I don't think the stuff that he does is fake. I think it's just unbelievable. Well, he probably knows how to do some fake shit, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Well, his car shit stuff stuff. stuff. 
stuff fake is fake, but um, I, I like this the David Blaine Street Magic stuff from the '90s. That's like if you watch those old tapes, those yeah. are fucking crazy. He's walking up to people and he's telling them how much change they have in their pocket. And obviously, he could be faking it for TV, but I just don't think he's he's faking it. I don't, I think he's a trickster and, and because he's a magician, but I don't think he's like a con man where he would just fucking lie to you like that. How could he possibly know how much change somebody has? I don't know. I don't know. And that's, that's the whole, that's so whole idea, him. right? Yeah. I think that a guy like that, when he does magic in the street for white people, they don't appreciate it enough. The black people know how to enjoy magic. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they lose it. the fuck did he do that? Oh! <laughs> I tell you what, man. One thing I I appreciate about African American culture is that those motherfuckers are way more fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, to, to, get, to hang out. Like yeah. My brother in law. My brother in law said he was recently in Mexico and they they did like an ATV day. And he's like, there was a group of black people when we showed up that were like all you know on vacation together in Cabo, and, and they were having more fun than anybody I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. Just on yeah. Those ATVs, you know. <laughs> I bet just just riding around making jokes and stuff and like uh, busting on each other or whatever it is they do. Yeah, yeah. I, I sound I never sounded whiter than what I just said. I just realized <laughs> busting on each other, but you know, like white people be driving an ATV like this. I think that they uh, uh, ten and two, honey, ten and two. <laughs> black people be like, you know, uh, I think that. Uh, that black people enjoy comedy more, you know. Have you ever watched? Uh, you've seen Showtime with the Apollo or the you know, things from the Apollo. The way they enjoy comedy, they're like literally falling out, you know, of their seats mm -hmm. sometimes into the aisle, running up and down the aisles, uh, swinging on chandeliers. You know, they really enjoy a good laugh. And uh, I noticed that when I stopped talking about race in my stand up, I got a much better reaction from all people but you know black people in particular you know would be more likely to tell me afterwards really enjoyed your show you know and i didn't have a lot of racial yeah. material but i would touch on it and 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 uh i'm still here by the way my camera just froze i gotta reset it okay yeah but but even touching on it it, it it's uh you know it, it, it doesn't always seem to come from a place that everybody is comfortable with there's nobody more nervous than an all-white audience though when it comes to anything racial Really? See, well, I don't know. Do you think that it's just easier for black comedians to get away with talking about it? Wait, Which, listen to what talking. you just said. What did you just say? Yes, I think it's much, much easier. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, because I could fucking go to a Chappelle show, and I don't think I would have any reluctance to laugh about anything he said about race. No, but I mean, an all-white <laughs> audience, not a white person in the audience. Mm. I'm talking about, like, like if you had... Now, if he's talking to an all-white audience, there will never be an, a more giving audience, you know? But to a white comedian, if he's trying to talk about race, an all-white audience gets very nervous about that. They really do, is. unless it's a compound media audience. I also have a show on compound media called Crime Report, and it's just like New York City Crime Report, except it's all over the world, so I can talk about any state, anything. And basically, we I just have a lot of fun with that show. It's live every Thursday on compound media, and it's like a uh, compound media is, is I can't explain how free speech it is. It's like uh, it's something that's so important and valuable right now, in particular, more so now than it was even in 2015. When I when I became part of it, it's like you know I really do believe the media is the enemy of the people, and Me the too. compound is the enemy of the media. So uh, you know if the enemy of the of your enemy is your friend, you really need to be uh, with compound media because like it, there's no more truthful place than that. So like I I, I completely in in, the, in giving that little promo I, I, I lost my whole point. But, uh, it well, what's the best. Uh, what tell me a little bit about what compound media is compound media is like it's a network for mm -hmm. podcasts like it's you know like uh in in a visual format you know we have a studio and uh you know like uh, it's, it's here in new york it's in midtown and we you know like i guess there's probably 10 shows it's four days a week you know i mean there's so much content that you couldn't watch it all there's no way you could stay caught up on all of it a couple of days a couple of the shows are four days a week are you familiar with uh, Opie and Anthony at all? You ever hear of that? The radio legends. That, 
<clears throat> that <clears throat> that name is fam- is ringing a bell, but I'm I'm not familiar. Well, that, they were they did radio in in Boston and in New York uh, for a long, long time, like twenty twenty five years or something like that. And they had this huge following. I mean, they were you know guests on Letterman and stuff like that, and they they mm-hmm. made a lot of comedians. They broke a lot of comedians. You know, probably more than any of the uh, talk shows were doing at the time. Now that I think about it, you know, like like talk shows kind of stopped breaking comedians. Uh, once Letterman went to CBS and stuff and everything kind of got diluted. So like, you know, radio was kind of filling that gap and they were, they were great. Uh, but uh, Opie kind of a douchebag and Anthony is super funny. So, uh, you know, one night Anthony was in Times Square, he's taking some pictures and uh, he got harassed by this woman. And then he made a bunch of comments on Twitter that got him fired. So he uh, started his own network in 2015 called, uh, the Kumi Network, which is now, you know, Compound Media. He's great. He's a true legend. He's one of the funniest people I ever uh, met. And without his network, I don't know where I'd be right now, you know I mean? Because it's being linked with like-minded people is, people call it tribalism. It's like, fuck you. I'm, I'm looking for anybody who agrees with a tenth of what I say. Well, and anybody who calls anything tribalism is really just saying, that's not my tribe. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you when you I mean? do it, it's tribal. Like, like, like if you're if you're fighting like the Native Americans in fucking you know eighteen ten, right? And you say fuck these guys, they're tribalists. It's like, well, yeah, but you're just part of the white tribe, right? Like, so mm-hmm. just, yeah, anybody who calls anything tribalism is just it's bullshit. You're just they're just saying you're not my tribe. Can you I mean, imagine somebody like ha- having a big problem with tribalism at that time? Like, um, that's a big problem in this country, really. I mean, we kind of thought some of these beheadings and stuff and burning yeah, of our saying villages, tribal. Tribalism is insensitive to indigenous people. It's like, well, fucking really? dicks. It's definitely you know, I think anti-Semitic. it's insensitive. Raping my daughter and uh, stringing her up from I mean, like you know, people. Indians were violent people sometimes. They did some very toward violent. Toward each other. They fought with it and toward each other. There's a lot of a lot of red on red crime, and uh, red red. you know, <laughs> like like when Trump gets in a fist fight with Cruz. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it happens all the time, especially really like at, at, at Burger King. You know, you see that, and it goes on. And then Trump's Trump's wife. I'll give you a whopper. Her, I'll give you a whopper. <laughs> I'll tell you something interesting, man. In videos, when like when somebody gets their dress ripped off, their pants, they have no pants or underwear on, and their wig has been snatched, and they go on fighting as if they are fully clothed. Nothing's wrong. Yep. How That's that type of commitment is what we need. That is just a lack of care that I aspire to. I think. I mean, I can I cannot dangle like that. I mean, it's not men. It's never men. It's it's, it's always those are women. Any man ends up naked, he's gonna like leave. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in a fight and the fight's gotten to the point where my pants got ripped off. I don't think I'm done fighting. <laughs> Well, like, all right, all right, you just say, all right, you won. <laughs> that's where we're different. Yeah, I, I, I'd say, yeah, I can see it. I'm standing here pantsless. You're the winner. You can be next in line. Because keep in <laughs> so, mind, what you're arguing about is something that happened at a Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> it can't it was be. never supposed to come to this. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know what happened. One thing led to another. <laughs> here we are. I'll go. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it's wild. Like, I guess I guess it just winds up looking like the first fight that Adam and Eve, Eve had before the before the apple. Wow, they they you, that was an argument leading up to the yeah, apple. I thought it was I mean, just more of a seduction. It was an argument. She's like, "Eat this." He's like, "No." She's like, "Eat it." I made it. I made, I made it. it for you. So she, <laughs> you don't like my apples now? Oh my god! Like, yeah. What do you, you think would have happened? Well, how does that story play out if they just actually never ate the apple? Because here's the thing that bothers me about it, right? You could they, apparently they couldn't sin before the apple. Then after the apple, that's the original sin. Now we're all sinful. It's like, yeah. well, if you couldn't sin before. Then like, how did you do the first one? With the tree of knowledge by eating by disobeying yeah. God, He said, "There's one thing, just yeah. one. You can so do they anything only knew how you to want." Do one son. Only knew how to do one sin. You take Eve, and and you don't even have to take her in private. You stick it in her fucking uh, cornhole. Do anything you want. You know you. Right. He is yours. Don't eat an apple. Right. All right. Right. I th- and the guy is like, this is cool. I can yeah. deal with that. Yeah, but of course, <laughs> he's like, what do you mean? I can't. <laughs> 
<laughs> women, women are so stupid. I've been taking care of this fucking garden every day for millennia, and I want to eat from the tree of knowledge. Stat. <laughs> I don't see any reason. Who is he? I talked to this snake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he had some fella. very interesting ideas. <laughs> He said, you've been growing a lot. I just want to make sure you know how to eat other apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, all right, baby. Chomp. Oh, shit, my dick's out. <laughs> and why is it a snake, like, in the story? Do you think it's just because they're, like, a fucking slithering, like, belly, like, close to the dirt as possible? Is that the but, metaphor? But they weren't at the time. They had legs. What do you mean at the time? Like at the, the time, that was the, he was cursed. The snake was cursed to crawl on its belly after that. So oh. prior to that, it had some other, maybe it had wheels. I don't know. I don't, it didn't. So it was, a, it was an alligator, and then it became yeah. a snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe a monitor, or uh, yeah, it's a, maybe a, a chameleon. I don't know any kind of a small lizard, a, a gecko, but it was it was not a snake. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I never thought of it like that. You're right. Yeah, and you got to crawl on your belly forever. And you'll know when your dick's out. And the snake was like, to... "You dumbass! I was already doing that." <laughs> yeah, basically, any do it. God, my legs are pretty short. <laughs> this is better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the whole reason to do it, just so he could crawl and get rid of his fucking limbs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tricked you. And and then and then that's why women have to have the pain of childbirth and having a period and everything because of that too. Because he fucked them up. Whenever they're fucking feeling annoyed. But they have to have a period. They should remember it's it's really their nature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's their fault. Yeah. It's their nature. It, even if they didn't yeah. have periods, they would make that same decision. You know, and I don't think that God's punishment uh, for men, you know, having to work by the sweat of your brow, is actually what the punishment was. I think the punishment may have been um, like uh -huh. when you're working by the sweat of your brow. Your wife like coming in and saying you, you don't spend enough time with me. <laughs> it's tolerating women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just having to deal with that. Because I love to work. I love to work, man. But I hate being nagged. He even says in the Bible, in Proverbs, I think it says better to live on the on the corner of the roof than in the uh, in uh, in the house with a nagging woman. Does it say that in Proverbs? He, yeah, it's Proverbs or Psalms. I can't remember which one. It's one of those. Yeah, somebody sang it. Yeah. So it's a tomb. on a tiny corner of the roof than in the house of the nagging woman. And you know, I'm I'm not I'm not anti women by any means. I think it's better to live on the corner of the roof than in the house with anybody who fucking nags. But uh, uh, no, no, I mean, like I'm I'm anti woman. I'll go ahead and say it. I mean, like because really? I'm, I'm I'm by nature men are anti women. You know, I mean, like if you if you're a man, you have some sense of logic, of reason, a desire for peace, a desire for things to just be chill. Good is good. Let's just keep it that way. Women are chaos, storms, fucking things up, taking something that's good, rear, just, you know, do you think it has to do with because the time. they're women, or do you think it has to do, it has to do with the, how the way our culture raises them? Because if you're like, I, I'm not sure that, no, no, I'm not trying to like have some fucking leftist like argument with you. Just curious what you think. <laughs> no, 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 so, no, no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I didn't mean, I didn't mean to sound like that. But, but like, just, but like, but like, but like Viking so women, I bet were pretty badass. You know, I bet you they were cunts. They, you know, they're probably like <laughs> nightmares. <laughs> nightmares. Think of the Viking I'm not cleaning men. your fucking shield. Clean your own damn shield. <laughs> yeah, I am out here. <laughs> yeah, they were bad. They're, none of them have been good. <laughs> no, I mean, they're, they're, you need them. I bet, she, I bet she was great, Cleopatra. Margaret Thatcher. She hell of a woman. No, look. I'm not saying women are, there's nothing good about them, but I'm just, I'm just against them, you know? I mean, just like they would be against me, uh, you know? They, if, I told they, you, if I told you you had a nice body, would you hold it against me? <laughs> yeah, I was, thinking, I was trying to look for a punchline there, too. And I, you ever I, heard that? Yeah, you ever heard that joke before? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mentioned a joke the other day to a couple of young women, younger women, you know, like if I say younger, to me it's like uh, 20s. A tw girl was 24, and the other was like, I don't know, 29 or something, 30. And, and I, I, the old limerick, there once was a man from Nantucket. They didn't know any more of that limerick than, they didn't even know what the fuck I was talking about. They never, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You've never heard that. That is gone. Dirty limericks are a thing of the past. They have, they there have, once was a man from it, Nantucket? I, I have no fucking clue what that is. 
Well, you know, just Google I mean, those words and it'll give you the whole poem, I'm sure. Unless Google is so fucking commie now that it doesn't even it sounds, allow it. It sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah, I mean, a man from Nantucket. I, I would tell you, the you want to hear the rest of the limer limerick? It's just well, vulgar. I got it pulled up, but I don't okay. know if I can say it. Does it have any slurs? <laughs> no, it doesn't have slurs. Okay. It doesn't say it slurs. Then. I just don't want to get no. kicked off like a YouTube. Why no, you say it. Go ahead. You're reading it for the first time. See if you find it amusing. Uh, Personally, I don't. I don't so find there, it. So there, so there once was a man from Nantucket who kept all his cash in a bucket, but his daughter named Nan ran away with a man and asked for the bucket Nantucket. That's not the fucking poem. That, that, where okay. are you reading that? Fucking Wikipedia, bro. That sounds to me like some kind of commie horse shit. That sounds like... <laughs> That's the 1902 Prin Princeton Tiger written by Professor Dayton Voorhees. So it probably is commie shit. You're, yeah, you're right. So you're, there's like... So I think, I think they started... I think people started to bastardize the original and that was why it was funny. But that's the original. I think that's the original and then people bastardized it because... Kept they all his cash in a bucket and then what yeah. happens? But his daughter named Nan ran away with a man and as for the bucket, Nan tuck it. Nan, I don't even get tuck it. it. She took the bucket. She oh, took it. yeah, Nan, tuck it. Yeah, that's right. You kind of boy, that is like a that's the kind of rhyme. Be, like from like be. Bob Dylan had a song. I'm not I'm not really into old Bob Dylan. I only like like three albums that are like from in the '90s and early 2000s. Yeah, I like just mo the song most of the time. That's pretty much the only Bob Dylan song. <laughs> most of the time, he, he has I think it's in High Fidelity or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got a song where he says, uh, you know. I'm going to recruit an army, some tough sons of bitches. I'll recruit my army from the orphanages. <laughs> I, I thought that was a great rhyme. But Nantucket, boy, that is, that's that's right up there. The, okay, it, so it, here's here's one. There there was a young man from Nantucket whose dick was so long he could suck it. He said with a grin as he wiped off his chin, if my oh, ear was oh. a cunt, I would fuck it. Yeah, there you go. That's it? That's it. That's that's the one. That's the that one. That is hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty like funny. That, what's that fucking weasel from Star Wars? <laughs> Remember, like, fucking Jabba the Hutt's... You know what I'm talking about? No. Yeah, Jabba no. the Hutt. He's got, like, a little pet yeah. straight up to him, you know? And, like, there's a scene where, like, Jabba the Hutt's, like, fucking grabbing ass or something, and the weasel just goes... <laughs> I think it might have been, like, one of the Lucasfilm's, like, redos of his old movies, because he kept fucking fucking him up and... Oh, you know, yeah. Him. Going and back. he added, like, animals and shit. I think he ended I don't know if you edit that movie. Yeah, I'll, you I'll find it for you. I'll send you the link. <laughs> I love it. You know, I, I love I love dumb shit in those Star Wars movies because it's just so, it's yeah. such a blind spot. There's so much money being spent, you know, and then they can. Yeah. How can you have such a huge blind spot? You think we want to look at this little kid race is pod or whatever the fuck it was? That movie was not even the worst of those uh, second three. I don't think. And I remember like had, the only thing that was, got better was this was the lightsaber choreography. Uh -huh. Those got yeah. better every movie, even through Disney, but but everything else got worse. And it's so frustrating because it's like imagine Picasso coming out with his fucking famous blue period, you know, paintings. And then like he decides he starts, you know, he wants to fucking paint like Hunter Biden. It's like, what the fuck happened, man? Like you had it. You had it. Where'd it go? Oh, <laughs> like, right. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, you're just like, wow, you really lost the knack here, didn't you? Yeah, like, how could you come to the conclusion, like, this, how could you be so correct and amazing and then just proceed, like, to fuck it up from there? Like, like the difference in the hustler and uh, the color of money or whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I yeah. actually do know that fucking cultural reference despite being a millennial. I fucking love the hustler. Yeah. Black and white Paul Newman. Yeah. And then the color of money, he's the mentor, and it's Tom Cruise, and it was cute, but it wasn't the hustler. And it's an Oscar winning performance for they, they they I think they gave him like a retro sort of Oscar for that, you know, because he deserves something. But I mean, like Tom Cruise kind of like uh made that movie kind of something else, but uh, yeah. and it was yeah. why do you, what's his name, Scorsese, right? You like Taxi Driver, like yeah, yeah, I do like Taxi Driver. I, do. Yeah. I don't know what you think about it, but I'll tell you the truth right now, I fucking love Taxi I Driver. I think, think you know what I think about it. <laughs> 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 I love that movie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love every part of it. You talking it, to me? Yeah. You talking to me? I don't see anybody else here. Yeah, anybody else standing here? And 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 he's got when he's buying all those guns and the gun salesman like that's a beautiful gun. Nah, it's a beautiful gun. Nah, that's a lovely gun. Look at this little cutie. You know, he's talking <laughs> going through all these guns and shit. It, it, 
it's the cast of characters is so like uh, wildly kind of all over the place, but at the same time, there's only a few, you know, uh, the other cabbies, yeah. I guess, you know, Civil Shepherd, uh, Albert Brooks. It was fucking. Who is the, who is the girl? What's her not not Winona Ryder, but um, she was Silence of the Lambs. The yeah, 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 Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster, thank you. I'm My girlfriend looks just like the young prostitute Jodie Foster. Really? Mm-hmm. That's nice. So she looks basically like a twelve-year-old girl. Yes. <laughs> Because she's 12. <laughs> she sees a couple more summers. She thinks we're related. Yeah. She thinks I'm looking after her. <laughs> she's not oh, that shit. smart. No, uh, no, she's she's older. She's 37. But, uh, you know, older than 12. But, yeah. Uh, considerably. Three times older. Yeah, yeah, way up there. Well, God, she's man. closer to being 12 than Joe Biden's age. But she does look like that. Yeah, she does look like that. Yeah, and Joe Biden has more of a fucking 12-year-old mentality right now. And, you know, watching yeah. him talk has become like a, like a national pastime, isn't it? Because it, people still, they still call it gaffes, but it's like, gaffes? No, that's, that's, this is typical of a man with dementia. He's, you know, he's completely deranged. And, uh, you know, I, I like to say, I don't know if I'm watching uh, the White House or... The naked gun sometimes, you know? I mean, like, it, it's just so silly. Yeah. Yeah. And people are like, oh, it's just fucking Republicans being, you know, dicks. But the truth of the matter is, I don't know a single Republican that wouldn't be begging for for Barack Obama to be president over Joe Biden right now. Well, we basically... And I hate Barack Obama. I think Barack <laughs> but, Obama is president right now. I, I, uh, really? Yeah. You think that he... That yes. anybody listens to fuck, Why would anybody listen to him, though? He's got no power. He has ultimate power. He's he's the ultimate elite. He is untouchable. He's unassailable. Nobody can ever have a problem with anything he does. He's the most popular U.S. president. Take a poll and see. Yeah, uh, that will never end. He has uh, the the gold card forever, you know. And and I think yeah, that he I, definitely I think the intelligence community. I think the fucking FBI and CIA oh, run the show. Oh, sure they do. Yeah, but he's but maybe Obama works for them. <laughs> yeah. He's he. They have to fucking respect him, you know. What I mean, because he can get a lot of their shit done. I mean, he he's proved that. I mean, he yeah. just like fucking go. Okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. I I don't want to feel like passing a law, going through Congress and shit. You know, I mean, Republicans are trying to win all these congressional races and stuff, and the Tea Party and all that stuff. And he just goes, "How about some guidance? We'll just do some guidance. All right, in schools now, uh, you can go to any bathroom you want, and if you don't, we'll just take away your federal funding." Same with rape in colleges. If you don't convict some boys of rape, then we'll take away your federal funding. Guidance. Yeah, that, Guidance. That, title, that Title IX shit was fucked up. Yeah, totally. You would have been in school around that time. I was in school around that time, and I had to deal with that shit. To be so, honest with you, I had personal experience of being falsely accused of sexual assault. And you're joking. Really? Tell yeah, me about yeah. it. Well, I'm. I, I don't really want to share details, you know, because it's not like because you're because you're a rapist. I get it, but I mean, yeah, exactly. But what happened was there was an accusation made by a girl who I dated on and off for about a year and a half, and it was bullshit. And um, the university recognized that it was bullshit, but it was an ordeal. So I'm just lucky. I'm lucky. I mean, honestly, you mean you, you must have gone to scary. like Oral Roberts University or something? Because, well, I went uh, to university. Belmont University in Nashville, and I was student body president. I knew the administration, and I think that they just knew that it was bullshit. But I don't, wow. I don't know. I, I mean, it was it. Yeah. So like uh, it, it, it's it, a big I deal was lucky I because I was lucky because the claim was made like a month after I graduated. So I wasn't even a student at the time. But I think if I had been a student at the time, it would have been a nightmare. They could have expelled you. They could have suspended you. They could have stopped you from graduating. Right. They could have right. done. But they anything. told they told me they're like they, they wrote me a letter and they're like, hey, we didn't we don't think you did anything wrong. We're not going to you're in good standing. No problem. Just, you know, wanted to let, we had to let you know that this happened. Thank that God. I, mean, you, you, I talked to a lawyer. A my lawyer was like, listen, you're just you're a ghost. Just don't fucking show. Don't show up for a while. <laughs> I was like, no problem. Oh, OK. So well, I, I mean, didn't, didn't go okay. back to my school for any events. Didn't talk to anybody related to that person. And that was it. Low profile. Huh? I mean, how yeah. severe was the accusation? Was it like it the, the severest ultimate? form? The oh, ultimate? my God. Yeah. Wow. That would yeah. that would be uh, anal rape. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And jump out of the bushes. Violence. A, a, a weapon. Uh, but no, she said. Well, and the funny, the funny thing about it is, I got a fucking genetic bleeding disorder, hemophilia. It's the most severe bleeding disorder you have. Like, I'm not like forcing anybody physically to do anything. Like, there's, there's no fucking way. Like, right. You could put, if you, like, if I got in a fist fight with you and you hit me in the stomach, 
a normal guy would, you know, like buckle over and like maybe puke. I would die. <laughs> okay. That's where you're so, wrong. If I punch <laughs> any man in the stomach, they will die. But yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. I, I'm but, that kind of dude. Point, I am. The point of the, no. of the matter is like there's – I'm not like fucking – I'm not – uh, even physically capable of doing something like that. Wow! Yeah, you can't. Uh, you're you're physically incapable of raping a woman. Yeah, I think without, I might. Well, without severe injury, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I could get my dick hard, though. Is what it is. I mean, like, I don't think I would be aroused by that much rejection. I just don't. The the, the power aspect of it doesn't appeal to me. You know, I mean, like, power to me has to be uh, consensually given. Otherwise, you know, you're just. Who gives a shit? Yeah, it's I, only I, it's only hot if you like if you actually close the deal, you know. Like yeah. like that's the that's what's sexy about getting laid is going out and like closing the deal. It's like an ego thing. Like, hey, she wants to because I'm so fucking awesome, you know. That's that's the sexy part of it. But yeah. if, like just forcing somebody to do it is like if it's like cheating. Like like do you actually feel good about fucking like cheating in a game of Monopoly? Like <laughs> I won because I was no. you know not actually paying the bank. Yeah. <laughs> like, <no. Yeah. laughs> exactly. I was stealing properties. Yeah. yeah. I had counterfeit in my pocket. <laughs> Monopoly is a game that is so over, right? I mean like uh overrated. Over. Just just over. Yeah. It's like it's like now they they've tried to evolve it in different into different, you know, like you might like you'd have, you know, uh Simpsons Monopoly. You know, the, the Rhea, or uh, what's the name of this show? One American uh, Monopoly or something, you know, or Simpsons Monopoly or <laughs> New York City Crime Report. It's all my fucking podcast guest face on the fucking squares. Like, yeah, oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to buy some Pat Dixon for $50. I, yeah, I think you put me about like around uh, those orange properties, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling a, like a light blue. Whoa. <laughs> like, wow. I'm gonna Connecticut be, I'm gonna Avenue. A, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a railroad, bro. There you go. Yeah, then you're all over the board, and yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't improve on it though. That's the problem. I know, I know, but yeah. it's just it's nice to have some real estate in diverse markets. It is. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so where can uh, where can people find you, man? At CrimeReport.nyc. That's a good place to go. CrimeReport.nyc is kind of you know whatever. I want to tell you about some of the other stuff I do. You can find yeah, me at Compound me. Media. Subscribe to subscribe on Compound Media, and that would be that would be great. There's all kinds of different plans. I do a live show there on Thursdays. I'm also doing a lot of live stuff. You don't see. I mean, this is live. That's great. I love live stuff. Anything can happen and shit. Uh, so there's a lot of that stuff on there, and and it really does look. You know, it's it has a. You just have to just watch some clips. Compound Media, great quality. Uh, I do a show called Too Woke to Fuck. That's like a sort of a liberal parody show, you know, where you take woke ideas and just follow them to their logical conclusion. Uh, you know, myself and another guy, we kind of do characters, I guess, who believe all this shit, you know, but they're the super liberal guys in their 40s who are like, you know, uh, trying to make it all work in their in their minds and stuff, you know. And so uh, it's it's too woke to fuck. It's very funny. It's It's heavily edited and it's not for everybody. Because uh, it's a little unusual sounding. There's a musical element to it. Uh, but it's uh, the the number two, the word woke, the number two again, and then F period. So, you know, two woke, two F. Because uh, you can't just go ahead and say fuck on iTunes. But New York City Crime Report is is kind of like the thing I've been doing the longest. And, uh, you know, I just did some stand-up in your town, Austin, there. And, uh, man, what a great town uh, for stand-up. Hit stand -up. me up next time you're in town. I'll, go, I'll come to your show for sure. Yeah, we did it at uh, the... Uh, I think Rogan's I opening gas, up here. The gas something, uh, gas company, something gas company. Hmm. I've only been here for a year. So Downtown. I'm very familiar with all. Oh, it was called venues. Vulcan Gas Company. Great place, great venue. I mean, like it was, it was really cool. Uh, you know, like a uh, great balcony and shit. We packed out a bunch of shows. People really do like to come and see the stand up. A bunch of stand ups are on the uh, network. Uh, you know, Gino Biscani is one of them, and Aaron Berg and Chrissy Mayer. Who is uh she's got a show called The Wet Spot, you know, so there's something for the ladies. Talib Starks, his show I'm on uh every the week as spot. well. The Wet Spot. Yeah, That's she's a, a doll. For a show. <laughs> yeah, she's she's a peach. Uh and uh I shouldn't say doll. Uh, that's that's I don't mean to diminish you know her. What? You know, I think I think that um uh it's got a certain American charm. American, you know, did we talk enough about America? That's what I'm concerned about. I'm really well, concerned to, about We can America. talk. We don't have. Uh, we don't have um, a limited amount of time. We can talk as long as you want. I just wanted to be 
I didn't want to take up your whole night, but I'm here for you, man. <laughs> yeah, clearly Let's I got a lot of America. Here, standing here against the mirror. <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk just, about America, bro. In a changing room somewhere. Yeah, you know, you, you, America is the greatest country ever. So it's it, it's the well, it best certainly country. has been at one point in time. Yeah, and and, and yeah, the the greatest. Uh, it, it's very ambitious in, in in its you know concept and stuff. I think the founding fathers might be surprised it's even still going at all. Yeah, I think I'm going to tweet right now that America was the greatest country of all time. It once tense. was. Yeah, it was. It was the greatest. It, and then, I for me, it ended. I mean, I know it ended for a lot of people at different times. You know, there's probably people who like uh, when Kennedy got shot. Maybe that's where they date it from. You know, but I would go yeah. with, uh, you know, nine eleven. Fucking, we thought it was going to bring everybody together, and then George Bush goes. By the way, I don't go for about four years. Don't go beating up Muslims. He said that really quick, though. Don't go beating up. That, everybody's going to want to go commit hate crimes against Muslims. Say, no, we're not. Why are you saying that? You know, you saying it because it gives the liberals a talking point and then they can start nagging again and it starts all this back and forth again. You know, I mean, it's just like that's a very controversial thing to say when you think about it. At a time when everybody's feeling peak patriotism to say, uh, no, no, don't go out there and, and there's no reason why a Muslim woman should have to. Stop it! Just stop saying that, and and that kicked it all off again. Uh, it put us right back in the same boat, and then we had identity politics became the dominant narrative because we can't say shit about that. We can't say like yeah, because every time nine eleven came up after that, some liberal person would go like, "But it's important not to take it out on the Muslims." They would scold you, you know, and it pissed us off. But we still couldn't say anything about it, really, you know, because like that makes you an Islamophobe or something. And so that's when they started really beating us with this idea that like identity politics over everything. And that, you know, got kicked into high gear, but like over a period of time, Trump comes along, exposes the media. And once they're exposed, you know, they're like the naked person in the, in the, uh, in, in, in the Burger King. Who so wants to fight I got, harder than ever. I got to ask you about this. Cause I struggle with the whole Islamophobia, like criticism. Okay. So, so, I am not a racist person. In fact, I would go so far as to say that I don't necessarily believe that race even really exists. Okay, so I don't know if we agree or disagree there. I don't care. That's not my point. My point is, like, someone calls me an Islamophobic, right? Someone, I, you're an Islamophobic. And I, I, and I say, okay, so do you believe in the Muslim faith? And they say, well, I'm not a Muslim. Like, so, so you think everything they believe is bullshit. And, like, otherwise, if you didn't, you would become a Muslim, right? They're like, well, yeah, yeah. So it's like, how the fuck is that not Islamophobic? Like, you, like if you're not a Muslim, it's because you don't believe any of their shit. Like, if you believed it, you'd be a fucking Muslim, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, well, it's that simple. Like, I'm not a fucking Lutheran because I don't believe that bullshit. Like, am I Lutheranophobic? Like, I don't know. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, yeah. Well, you're all, if you don't believe their shit, you're afraid of them. Yeah, I'm not necessarily even afraid, just, just a phobic. Like, I'm just not part of it because, like, I go away. I go a different direction. Like, if you say something's hydrophobic, it means water doesn't stick to it, right? So, yeah, right. I'm, I'm Islamophobic. Like, yeah, but, in but that we sense, all, I'm not anti-Islam. Are... I'm just Islamophobic. No. Like, I'm going no. somewhere else. I'm not a fucking Muslim. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, your interpretation of phobic is not like, the, it's like you said, you know, hydrophobic. Yeah, like, if I'm homophobic, if I'm, like homophobic I'm not like, I'm not like, yeah, I'm not like bigoted. Like, like I, I don't have a problem with gay people. I think they should have the same rights. Whatever. I got gay friends. I've even fucking fought for gay rights before. There's a whole story about that. You've even but, sucked a couple of dicks. I mean, come yeah, on. yeah. Just you know, you got to try it. You know, before you knock it. And so, but I'm so, but I am homophobic in the sense that like I am certainly avoiding homosexual activity. Like, <laughs> you know, you don't want to be around it at all. I don't want to do it. I don't want to participate. So I won't sense, even watch the Al Pacino movie Cruising. Won't even watch it. <laughs> Scent of a yeah. woman. That's all for me. Scent of a woman. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes. Smell pussy in here. Yes. But he's not a rat. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? So you, no, I don't. But uh, <laughs> but a uh, what? So Scarface? No, no, no. Scent of a woman. Scent of a woman is a great movie. I saw it once I think and so. forgot all about it. I mean, the, I the impression right, is all I remember from that. Well, I mean, it's a little bit sentimental. You know, but uh, I really like the court scene in the end when he shows up to fucking back this kid who was about ready to right. get. He was getting thrown under the bus by Philip Seymour Hoffman. You can't handle the truth. Yeah. 
It's kind of like that, yeah. But he's like, yeah, he's like, he's not a Baylor man or whatever. And he's like, but he's not a rat. <laughs> That's the famous What would you say one. your top five movies are? Cool Hand Luke, number one. Um, Great choice. After Cool Hand Luke, I don't fucking know. Man, <laughs> wow. that's that. That's the one. I mean, I like, I like movie. I like all the Tarantino movies, man. I'm a fucking regular plebe in that shit. I love. You think he's gotten know. better? Yeah, I do. Well, I think his last movie. I think is the his tech. Best. I think his, I think the tech has certainly gotten better too. You know what I mean? Like, how can you really compare like a movie like Pulp Fiction to the most recent Reservoir one? Dogs or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, Reservoir yeah. Dogs to you know uh, Hollywood. So the high budget stuff, yeah. So I, I think he always. Um, I, I think he's probably gotten better, but he was always so good that it's almost hard to see the improvement. <laughs> you know what, though? I have to say, watching Pulp Fiction now is a little bit like running your tongue over a sore tooth or something, you know? Because it's just like, mm, I can't, you can't stop with that. Those the, the dumb dialogue in Pulp Fiction, man, and some of the corny ass, you know, like when she makes the little square. Yeah, I love the way it's cut up. I love the way it's edited. It's really great, you know. Obviously fine classic movie does not age well when they're talking about like i don't know like cube dice versus crush dice you know oh but cubes, yeah, cubes, yeah yeah cubes are america's just, or the the foot massage arguments the famous one right like talking about whether or not a foot massage was enough to justify throwing the guy out the window yeah <laughs> i still think it's entertaining man would you give a man a foot massage <laughs> fuck you yeah <laughs> he had a pretty good point but then there's the yeah. again, you know the uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Royale with cheese and all that shit. Yeah. And yep. Five dollar yep. milk. I got to see what a five dollar milkshake tastes like. I got a theory about John Travolta, and not everybody goes along with this, but I, he's been in Hollywood and acting a long time, and I think that he believes he's in every movie that he's in. Like whatever movie he's in, he thinks that's happening. Because he's such like a like a serious method actor. No, because he's just a fuck. It, he's crazy. I think that he's crazy. Phenomena and that, sucked. <laughs> and he believes that he is Michael the Angel or whatever. The, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he, he, yeah. But I'm, I was, Battlestar Galactica or whatever the fuck that was. But no, we I, I'm a big Battlestar Galactica fan. Don't fuck with Battlestar, man. No, no, no. I didn't mean that. I mean, <laughs> like, whatever that was, it, the uh, you know, it wasn't called Battlestar Galactica. What was the movie that he was in that was so bad that was the uh, Scientology movie? Uh, I didn't know that he was in a Scientology movie. He, 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 well, he was in Swordfish. Which it was one of like, yeah, it was one of the stories that uh, L. Ron Hubbard wrote, I think. You know, there he was, was a phenomena, which was phenomena was a science fiction one where the he gets Battlefield by Earth because a super. Oh, that sounds familiar. I don't know. I think it was Battlefield Earth. I think that was the one. Yeah. So they they he got one of L. Ron Hubbard's books made into a movie. I think. Because he I, okay. I think I think that. it was some kind of Scientology theme or something. I would say Jaws is my favorite movie. I think That's Jaws. It is just lean. There's no fat on it. Did you You'll see the HBO it. Steven Spielberg doc? It's really good. I didn't see it. Man, if you have HBO, you should watch it. Uh, I got HBO Max. On, that the, is that yeah, the, yeah, that works. That works. Yeah, so there's a whole Steven it. Spielberg documentary where it's they're actually interviewing Steven Spielberg talking about his whole career from beginning to end, and he goes through like every movie and what it was like to make and all this shit. You'd love it. He was sort of like that uh, 70s kind of... Um, yeah, he, he invented the blockbuster, basically, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, George Lucas is a little bit more... I don't know, like, like the, you know, they... they you know that this like era of movie making was the era of the director. It was only for a few years, you know. Like there's a movie called Raging Bulls and Easy Riders or something, and it's all these guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, fucking uh, Sam Peckinpah and you know, uh, yeah, those dudes are in the dock. Yeah, those some of those guys are really interesting, and then uh, some of them are just pretentious dickheads, you know. I mean, it makes you think, man, I could make a fucking movie. Why, what the hell? You know, we should make a fucking movie. Chase. We should make a movie. Which, by the way, Chase Neiser, thank you, sounds very much like the name of a guy who should be in broadcasting, which you are, but it sounds like a guy who's like the local news with Chase Geyser, you know? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chase Geyser on mm, yes, radio, otherwise known as NPR. Mm, yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. So I'm going to eat a bug, and I'm not even that hungry. <laughs> That's a reference I don't get. Anita Bug was was this NPR host, and when I lived in Nashville, and every day she's like, "I'm Anita Bug," and I and I was like, "Why are you gonna eat a bug? Like, what the fuck?" And her name are you gonna eat a bug? bug? Yeah, I'm Anita Bug. I'm Anita Bug. 
<laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I didn't Sorry, even get just, it. I'm a Anita Buck. And I'm not even that hungry. <laughs> her name was Anita Buck. Uh, yeah, and Bug, it's like, like B-U-G-G, I think. Her name was Anita Bug. Bug. Anita yeah, Bug. Yeah, she's like, I'm Anita uh, Bug. <laughs> I'm Anita <laughs> Bug. <laughs> that's <laughs> really great. That's yeah, great. I swear she's real. I, I'm Anita Bug, and I'm not even that hungry. No, I mean, I can't, you, uh, you lived in Nashville. Did you grow up in Tennessee? <laughs> no, I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, and I went to Tennessee for college. You go to and false rape accusations. Vanderbilt? Oh no, you told me the college you went to. Christian small Christian school down the road from Vandy. <clears throat> okay. I went to MTSU. Oh, cool. Murfreesboro. I've been yeah, I grew up in Tennessee over near Chattanooga, Cleveland, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I don't really go around telling people my hometown all the fucking time. But I'm well, telling you. Down on the south, but I'm telling you, man, every dumb person I met in the south is smarter than every smart person I met in the north. Yeah. I agree with that <laughs> to a degree. To a certain extent. To a, to an extent. Yeah. I know growing up in my town, they, there was a certain attitude that they had where they were sort of like, they loved to have any situation where they could feign confusion with you. <laughs> yeah. that's, see, that's what's so brilliant. What? Huh? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You need a who? You need a what? Do what now? Do yeah. what now? That was the big Tennessee one. Do what but now? I, like, do what now? You just didn't, they didn't hear you. You didn't even ask them to do something. Like you said, hey, like, uh, uh, do you know where the, where, the, where the wrench is? And they'd say, do what now? <laughs> yeah. Do what? No, don't do anything. Don't do anything. Just tell no, me no. where the wrench is. I'm not telling you to do anything. It's not an order. <laughs> do what? Do what? <laughs> no. And they're always fixing everything. People come from the north. They find that funny. Oh, yeah. Fixing. What, what are you fixing? Stop fucking with it. You're going to break it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and they use the term fixing too. Like I'm fixing to go to the mall. Yeah, and that's like just, they love fixing so much. They just say fixing. I'm fixing to go to the mall. I'm fixing to make dinner. I am. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm fixing to lose my mind. And reckon. I reckon. I, re- I reckon that's probably right. They but do a lot of reckoning. It's stupid, but it's fucking charming. And y'all should actually be a contraction. It is way more efficient than you guys. Yeah, it is. It's one but syllable. It does, make, it does make you sound like a dumbass. If you're well, you movie. all is, is, a, is a very natural contraction to make. I don't understand why that's a thing. You know, y'all. Yeah. I like you y'all. That, did you watch Lost, the TV show? No, but I had a con girlfriend who did. That's it was one of, the things I, one of the things I hated about her. <laughs> yeah, <that's>, and she's <laughs> here. <laughs> and guess who's coming on the show? <laughs> Please. Welcome, Michelle. <laughs> wow, I married two women named Michelle. You pegged it. I no two shit. Women named My first two were named Michelle. Yeah, that's generational, bro. And the like third one was the third one was named Mandy. And uh, yeah, it is generational because I was look. I so happen to be looking. Why do you keep getting looking. married if you hate women so much, dude? Because what else am I supposed to do? I'm trying to narrow it down to one I can deal with. But why don't you just date somebody for a long time then instead of marrying them? Well, I did. I dated. You fall him. in love. You fucking fall in love, and then you just like, think I. Oh, want I'm a very romantic guy. I think yeah, that I, I think that you know you don't you don't love a woman unless you also fucking hate her. You know, I mean, I just don't think that one of those emotions can exist without the other. I think that if you, I think you've never loved a woman if you haven't hated her fucking guts and wish she was dead even. Man, maybe I'm not that might be this. Too I'm not saying this because my wife does not watch the show. I'm not saying this just to make my wife happy, but I do not hate my wife. <laughs> I do. Have you ever hate hated her though? Oh Even yeah, for I've had moments month. of rage. Yeah, for sure, for moments. But I've never That's what like, I'm talking gone about. through an extended period where I felt hatred for her. Well, I mean, yeah. hatred, I guess, is if you're going to define it uh, super literally, you know, then maybe not. I'm just it. making sure I understand. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to like fucking. No, no, no. I, I, I see those yeah. moments of rage as like moments of clarity. You know, where you're yeah. like, you really discern the fact that you hate this fucking individual. Yeah, so I remember much. one time in particular. I could tell you. Yeah. I, I, I um set my alarm for like 4 30 in the morning one time because i had so much fucking work to do the next day i own a small advertising business and i had like way too many clients and it was just insane for a while and i remember the alarm went off at 4 30 in the morning and she like snapped that the alarm went off that early and i i just went into a rage like do you think i want to get up at 4 30 in the morning to like make money so we can fucking buy a house and live in california where we were living at the time like you think i want to pay the taxes like <laughs> like it was a bad argument but it, it that was probably the worst argument we ever had but that was like that's a that's a specific example of the rage like i love her and i loved her but i never felt more hate in my life than like those you know 15 minutes of just like <laughs> like you're it's yelling, you're yelling at me for waking up to fucking pay for like everything you want <laughs> Yeah, look around you. You see nothing but evidence of my love for you. Right, right. 
You think yeah. I want to wake up at four thirty? I'm doing this for me because I'm selfish. Like, are yeah. you serious? <laughs> what a dick I am. You know what? Yeah. Snooze. <laughs> Snooze. Yeah. Yeah, I had a similar so thing one mean. time. So yeah, one mean. time I locked my wife out because I was drunk and I I passed out and she had to get a guy to like a, a you know property manager to come over with a screwdriver and undo it and then she had the nerve to come wake me up and I'm like what the fuck you think I want to wake up right now <laughs> <laughs> same shit we're practically the same guy bro. it's just pretty. <laughs> You're what I might have been if I had to quit drinking uh, earlier <laughs> rather than when I was 30. But uh, Well, yeah, maybe I made on. the wrong decision then because, God, do I want to be you. Oh, sure. Who wouldn't? Who, who, wouldn't? Would. who wouldn't want all of this? Where, yeah, where are you right now, man? Are you at your pad? Oh, I'm at, you at? I'm, yeah, I'm at home. This is, this, is, uh, this is where I live. This is all of it. This is all of it. It's awesome, you, bro. You got the it. fucking cool backdrop with the glass and everything. Yeah, and then and I've got this screen. like I got a green screen. Yeah, it doesn't get used quite enough. But uh, hey, look, you know, I, I love where I live, and it only cost me twenty five hundred dollars a minute to live here in Manhattan. So that's good. But so you uh, actually, do you love living in New York? I mean, I, I love. I, I used to, and now I'm kind of uh, up in the air about it. You know, I mean, I like the people that I know here, and I, yeah. I used to love working all the clubs. It was great. Post COVID, it's kind of like a new car just coming up. I don't know. Uh, it's like move to Texas, over. man. I'll go key up on Austin. Just thinking about it, I used I've worked Cap, Cap City was uh, actually the last club I drank in uh, back in '99. We should and, go uh, back there. Yeah, see what's <laughs> up. I've got a picture of myself and Greg Giraldo. It's in this last week I drank, and I look like I ate Greg Giraldo. I swear to God, I'm I'm, I'm so fucking puffy and, and worn out. Oh yeah, it was like I was like a very I mean not that I'm like in peak condition now with my tits and everything here but <coughs> but I look terrible. Dude, <coughs> and I look very unhappy and Look at that. That's a beauty. <laughs> that that see that that's a beauty. You can hammer you can go out and hammer nails all day with that. Oh, Bring yeah, it back and it'll cut straight yeah. down the I got the dust cover with the fucking that's your ass flag. <laughs> I'm ready for that's, action. That's beautiful, dude. <laughs> Just fire off a couple of rounds, can you? No, I can't because I don't live on 10 acres. But if I lived on 10 acres, I could legally fire off my gun. That's what you need, 10 acres? Yeah, 10 acres. And, you know, anywhere but Austin, you can afford to get 10 acres in Texas. So if you buy land with at least 10 acres, you can go in your backyard and shoot your AR-15. No problem. So how is it guys like us wind up in these fucking metropolis uh, of, I'll tell you uh, exactly why because I told my wife I wanted to move to Texas and she said she was only leaving California if she lived in a major city and I said fine I'll move to fucking Austin Texas why not I mean I guess Dallas would be the same deal huh <clears throat> yeah Dallas is better than Austin in terms of like you know not having to deal with like social justice bullshit but it's way better to live in a red in a blue city in a red state than a red city a red area of a blue state you know, so like every time the mayor does something fucked up in my city, the governor corrects it. <laughs> so it's like, that'd be nice. Yeah. yeah, I live in a I, I live in the bluest part of, of, of one of the bluest states. I'm a yeah, moron. but but New York's special because you're a comedian and there's some fucking smart people there. And I'm telling you something. The Democrats in New York are not pussies. Anybody who lives in New York, you cannot live there and be a pussy. You just can't fucking make it. Dude, yeah. they're totally pussies. They're the worst. <laughs> They're the worst. They walk around with masks outdoors and they jog yeah. past you. I had a lady yeah. jog past me during lockdown. Nobody's around. I'm smoking a cigarette on the corner. This young woman jogs past with a mask on. <laughs> what do you mean? The mask isn't even keeping out the cigarette smoke? Yeah. How do you think it's keeping out fucking COVID? <laughs> well, well, yeah. What do you think the air is like in New York City to begin with? There's metal shavings in it. You, you, people get lung cancer here earlier than they do other places. You, you're a fucking moron. Why are you outdoors? They're out with masks on. They are uh, the biggest social justice idiots. Yeah, and, that's uh, true. That's and, true. But here's the thing, though, man. Per intolerant. capita. Per capita, I'm not sure. Because, like, if you live anywhere with millions and millions of people, you're going to see a lot of dumbasses. But there's some, there is some smart person for every dumbass, you know, who's able to afford to wear a mask and, and run in the middle of a weekday. 
there is some smart dude busting ass surviving for that person. <laughs> yeah. Know? You know, and you know who that is? Usually they don't speak English. I know. Who. You know, they, I mean, a lot of that. I mean, I, I, I meet a lot of people that I'm simpatico with who are from, you know, Pakistan or whatever, you know, because they see all this shit going on and they go, oh, yeah, governments lie to people. Americans don't seem to know that. But, yeah, they're right. totally lying to you. And this is bullshit. And they're making a shut our business down. Yeah, uh, it, it's That's it's really a, it, and, and so you try to you, you communicate on that level as best you can, you know. But you have to be careful too, because I had a five dollar bill that I found, and it said, uh, I, mean, "I want to make sure I get the somebody phrasing wrote right." On it? It's, uh, yeah, somebody wrote on it, and it said, uh, "Alan, please save us!" Right, and I was like, "That's weird," oh, you know. Alan Greenspan. Yeah. Alan, please save us. And so I was showing it to the guy at the fucking uh, convenience store, you know, just a friend of mine who happens to be a Muslim guy. I'm like, look at this. And, and then I realized it, it actually says Allah, please save us. Oh, yeah. And I'm showing it to him like, oh, look. And uh, you got to be careful with shit like that because I think I actually uh, awakened to sleep or so. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I saw him, he wouldn't look me in the eye. I mean, change things. <laughs> <laughs> for the worse things started to blow up started taking pilot license he said he was getting his pilot's license uh, yeah it's, don't need to land so you know you all, started watching license to kill uh, all, all these things man happened here like you know the eric garner thing the chokehold they talk about that wasn't a fucking chokehold and, and and trying to talk sense to any it's interesting as a comedian because i've kind of like stopped trying to be like uh Obviously, I'm not anything that I'm not. So I'm talking to a diverse young audience in the village, and I'm saying, "Yeah, I'm like your substitute fucking teacher here or something. I'm the oldest, whitest person here, but you know, uh, don't throw anything." And uh, you start talking to these people. It's like they they find shit funny, but they know that they're not supposed to laugh at it. It's it's mm -hmm. weird. The generation now that will actually resist laughter. Unless it's just like fucking, they just can't help it, or it hits critical mass, or something. I mean, it, 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 I, I wonder about this generation. But then again, I guess well, I think the generation. Out. I'm millennial. I think Gen Z is going to be badass. To be honest with you. Yeah, I've seen good I look signs. At my nephews. I look at my nephews. They're 15, 16, 14. Like they fucking worked their ass off. They bought their own fucking first cars. Shit that not, I didn't even do, and I thought that I wasn't really of my generation. And um, and. I just see a generation that you can't trick them because they know that so much is bullshit. Yeah. Like, did you know that the Gen Z generation, like an astronomical number of them don't believe uh, that Helen Keller is real. They don't believe she's did real. You know? They don't, they don't believe that she was deaf and blind. So you tell them about Helen Keller in school and they just did like a study or something. I can't remember where I heard this, but uh, an astronomical no number of them are just like, yeah, bullshit. That's interesting. And I think that's awesome. And I believe Kinda in Helen Keller. Think, don't get right? me wrong. But they're just like, yeah, fuck you. No way. I don't buy it. I don't know. Maybe I don't believe in Helen Keller. No, no, think about it. Why would, I, why would I believe some movie with Melissa Gilbert? And, Is and, you it know more I mean? likely that she made it up for a fucking speaking gig at book sales? There were a lot of snake oil salespeople in the fucking 19th century or whatever. She was exploited. Whatever. By communists, you know that, right? She I was a wobbly. I don't, know, I don't know shit about her. All I know is that facts she, about Helen Keller. She was a wobbly. They you they they marched her out as like you know power to the people, communist shit. That's well, true. If you're fucking dumb and blind, communism, you know, might be for you. That seems perfect, doesn't it? You're like, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> I know see shit, so little. Hear shit. <laughs> yeah, but I do know the system of government that we should all be living <laughs> under. <laughs> but yeah, but I just think it's fascinating that Jed Z, like, like apparently they, like, it, it was like something that happened one year where I don't know if it was like a viral idea or something, but the teachers were like, none of my fucking students believe in Helen Keller. And I can't, like, how the fuck can I explain it to them that Helen Keller is real? You know, <laughs> I love that though. Maybe she's not though. <laughs> yeah. What, what would you put lying. past anybody at this point? What would you put past <laughs> anybody? The fake insurrection, you know? The Capitol that, Police. Yeah. So what does that say, though, about what they're going to be like in 15 years when like, they start running for office and you know, they're voting and they're working? Like, I don't think they're going to be fucking critical race theory leftist pussies. It's the Maybe. millennials that are fucking it up. They're the teachers now. They're my age. They're teaching. They're you know the fuck-ups. Gen yeah. Z's badass. You know why the millennials are so fucked up? It's because of the boomers. Well, I'm not a boomer. Generation X is a very small generation, right? It's very yeah. elite. Elite fraternity. <laughs> 
and 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 the the boomers had kids and they were like we are from the 60s oh my god we invented america we are the best things ever and these are the best children ever and they don't have to chew their candy i'll chew it for them like a mother bird and they have to wear a helmet when they ride their bike and all this shit and and and, and peanut allergies and helicopter moms and all this it, it, they ruined it just like that because they bought into all that stuff that's supposed to soften us up and and in, in the boomers are the worst generation of people that ever existed. Yep, they suck. And you know what? If you think boomers are old, Joe Biden's not even a fucking boomer. He's from the silent generation. Did you know that? Yeah. He's too old to be a fucking boomer. He's old enough to remember when Hitler died. He was born like five years after AC was invented for the car. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy is so fucking after old. After he was born in 1942, I think, and I think AC and cars was like 39 it was invented. Trump's so, pretty old too, but you never know. Yeah, it, he's man. old, but there's a big difference between 72 and 76, though. Apparently, and there is. My dad's man. 72. I'm sad to say it, but if you're 76, man, like the older you get, the well, more is, precious every minute is. Like, isn't you know, Biden like, 79? Well, he might be now. I think he was 78 when he was elected. So yeah, yeah, yeah feasibly he's 79. So okay, if, yeah. If he got elected, if he got elected for a second term. He would be 86 at the end of it. He's not going to be elected for a second term. I don't think that's possible. I, I don't even I mean, know I, if he was elected for the first term. Who I, fucking he, knows? I, no, I Who know. For, he, obviously, he wasn't. You've never met a Joe Biden voter. Neither have I. They don't exist. Nobody Nobody's voted. Nobody's ever run for president three times and then won. <laughs> I mean... I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's a lot of shit wrong with him, man. I mean, and then the and then not only lose, did he the win, harder it is to win that fucking race. But he won like more votes than anybody, more than Barack Obama, more than anybody in the history of anything. Yeah, no he's that fucking way. popular. And they no tell his way. poll numbers, what are they, 51%? And he's up there saying that like uh, he doesn't know how many people there are in the country. Well, and and how here's many the people- thing. I don't even think that Trump got the number of votes that he got. I think they had to do fake votes for Trump in order to make it look... Like, I, I think that the whole thing was just inflated. Like, I think that they had to, like, fuck with the numbers enough. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't doesn't add up in ma- mathematically, but I, I, I think I that I think Trump that was so high just generally. I think I think Trump he got I think he states. beat Biden. I think he beat he, Biden, but I don't I think Trump won 50. Those. I think he won 50 states. I think he literally won every state, no including Delaware. Way. You think he I think he did. Wife? Yeah, man. He won 49 <laughs> states. <laughs> I, 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 in Hawaii. I think he won the same states he won in 16. That's what I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's more likely. I mean, why I would never, you lose? I never met anybody who voted for him the first time that's like, mm, not going to, except for Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh was on my podcast. He voted for him in 2016 and didn't vote. That's strange. Him. That's strange. Joe Walsh is an interesting guy, isn't he? He's like sort of a never yeah. Trumper, but he's like anti crime. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand this he's whole like, thing. Yeah, I don't know his deal either, but I, 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 I don't agree with like most of his shit, but I, I also don't think that he's lying because everything he says is like totally not conducive to any sort of political game. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like lose, lose right, shit right. all the time. So it's like, you must mean it. <laughs> yeah. He gets you a know? tough position to take and he's taking it. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, fuck Trump and, fr- and fuck the Democrats. It's like, now no one's going to vote for you, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, I yeah. don't care. He's the worst fucking person I ever met. You Democrats are all fucking communists. <laughs> He's like, all right, all right. I don't care if I they take away my that. radio show. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's the audience for that show? Yeah, and so I had him on on the podcast for like thirty minutes. We talked, and it was a. Uh, it was, you know, it was really, I really enjoyed talking to him. I think he's a good guy. I don't agree with him, but I think he's a good guy. Yeah. All right. Well, you obviously agree with everything I say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, which, I told no. you we're the same guy. So <laughs> it's crazy. We're the youngest of four, uh, yeah. super old fucking uh, siblings. Super gay. Yeah. Super gay. Love the dick. You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, this mic. It fr- and uh, fucking camera freezes all the time. It's because it overheats. Oh, you have a nice camera, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I need a DSLR, and I think it overheats after like thirty minutes, so I have to. Reset so it. I, I, I hope that all your your viewers and listeners will check check me out. I do have to go. Yeah, uh, and, and, yeah, I'll, yeah, and yeah, but yeah, I want to stay friends with you. You're actually like uh, yeah, we're gonna stay friends. Yeah, that's that's uh, I, I say that uh, to to not everybody actually, but uh, you know it, it, we have a lot in common, and uh, it, it was I really enjoyed talking to you. It was great great conversation. I really enjoyed it too, man. Real pleasure and honor to have you on. All right. Bye. All right, dude. <laughs>